I'm Tony Keith, the Christmas Light Guy. In this tutorial, we'll do a deeper dive into submodels to create interesting effects on candy canes in X Lights. If you haven't watched my first video about using submodels on candy canes, I recommend you watch this first as it explains how I created the submodels. In this video, I'll go into more detail on creating the actual effects. Let's get started. Okay, let's open up X Lights. In this tutorial, I have two candy cane models, a Boscoyo Chroma Cane 48 and a Boscoyo Chroma Cane 99. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to create rows and vertical submodels. The verticals were renamed to vertical-cols for vertical columns. Remember how to access submodels. Click on the submodels and the dialog will appear. Select rows. Recall, if you highlight node ranges, you can use your arrow key to move up and down to visually verify if you've correctly configured your node ranges. Now let's select the columns and do the same thing. These look okay. For this tutorial, I have added vertical rows submodels. These are the rows that make up the vertical part of the candy cane. Now let's move over to the Sequencer tab and take a look at the sequence. Now in the Sequencer tab, I've already created a 60 second animation sequence. I added timing marks every 4 seconds with labels for each effect. All the effects in this section of the tutorial are only applied to submodels. We'll take a look at that by expanding the submodels so we can see it and by changing the effect settings. I'm not going to get into layer blending or multiple layers. I'll touch on that subject later. Let's start with the bars effect. What I've done here is drop a bars effect onto the row submodel and change the effect settings to get it to look like this. I set the direction to down. The same effect also works on the smaller candy cane model. Moving over to bars up, the scrolling goes up. The only difference is the direction is set to up. You can also set this to down, up. You can set it to expand. You get an effect that looks like this. Compress. If you turn on 3D, you get some interesting effects. You can also go left and right, and you get another effect. Set it back to up. Moving on to vertical bars up, I've dropped the bars effect on the vertical rows submodel, and you have something that looks like that. You can also change this. Um, sorry and down, down, you can also do compress and expand and you get something that looks like that. You can do compress and expand with 3D as we did in the previous one and you get something that looks like that. Okay, let's put this back to up, turn off 3D. Let's go back to um, bars just on the verticals. So now I've added on the columns. It goes back and forth. Let's take a look at the curtains effect. I've dropped a curtains effect onto the um, rows. And it disappears. Same with the smaller one. Let's go to appear. And basically that's just changing the top to bottom, open and close settings here. You can play with the speed uh, and the width. Now if we drop the curtain onto the vertical rows, it only goes on the verticals. Same thing, we can change the top, bottom, close and get the opposite effect. Now let's take a look at the garlands effect. I call this stack. I've dropped it onto the rows and it sort of stacks up. Looks like that. Neat effect. 
And stack two, the only thing different between stack two is I've played with the garland type and the spacing. So I just played with this until I got the desired effect. Next, the marquee. I'm going to drop the marquee onto the rows and I get the outline. And that's by changing the band size and skip size. Okay. And here I've dropped it. I've dropped a marquee on the strand, the entire strand here. Notice it's on the strand and we get the same effect. And then we're going to go to like a second outline. I've changed the speed. Remember, here's the first one. And here's the second one. And the only thing I've done is the band size and skip size. I've changed that to get the desired effect. Next, we're going to look at um, shockwave. And I've put a shockwave on the entire effect or on the rows. And you get something that looks like that. So far, all the effects in this tutorial are only applied to the submodels and by changing effect settings. Next, I will show you a couple of examples using multiple layers and layer blending. I'm not going to go into much detail, but I do want to introduce you to layers. Let's have a look. Let's take a look at layer blending, specifically transitions. I have taken a bars effect and dropped it onto the rows submodel. And I've added in and out transitions. Let's take a look at those. On the input, I added a pinwheel. And on the output, I added a fade. And if we look at that, that's what we get. Kind of interesting. Same thing works on the smaller model. So don't be afraid to play with transitions. On the next example, I've taken a marquee and dropped it onto the rows. And then I've created a new layer by going in, say insert layer below. And I've added or dropped a curtain effect onto the second layer. I played with the timing, the speed, and I get an effect that looks like that. Kind of interesting. In the first part of this tutorial, I showed you how to create many effects using only the submodels and adjusting effect settings. In the second part, I briefly introduced layer blending in the form of transitions and multiple layers on a submodel. As you can see, it's quite easy to create many different effects using submodels. In my tutorial, I only use candy cane models, but you can submodel any model. Don't be afraid to create and use submodels. You may be surprised on the unique effects you can create. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more, please subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy.